Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be checking out this guy, the Epoch Batteries 12 volt 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now I did quite a bit of research before picking this particular lithium battery for my RV. Did I make a good choice? Well, stick around and find out. Okay, so this is one of several videos I'll be posting about this particular battery. In this particular video, we're going to focus on a review of the product itself, including why I selected this and how it lived up to my expectations. Now, if you're interested in the installation process, particularly if you have a Winnebago Navion or View, check out the channel where you'll find that video also. And of course, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button so you'll get notifications when these and other videos post. All right, so there is a lot of information to cover here. So I'm gonna post the different chapters over here and those same chapters should appear in the video timeline. So if you want to skip straight to a particular section, you can do that also. And before we get started, the usual disclaimer, this video is not sponsored or paid for in any way. All of the products featured in this video were purchased with my own money and the opinions are entirely my own. If you are interested in any of the products, check out the video description where I will post those links. Okay, so I know that if you're watching this video, you probably already know about the advantages of lithium batteries over lead acid batteries, but I feel this video would not be complete if we didn't at least cover the basics. So if this stuff is all old to you, then please feel free to skip ahead to the next section. So for me, the number one reason why you would switch from lead acid batteries to lithium batteries is because of what's referred to as the energy density, which is basically how many amp hours you can get per pound of battery weight. Let's illustrate this by looking at a real world example. So these are the batteries that I took out of my Winnebago Navion. There are two batteries. Each battery is rated at 105 ampere hours and weighs in at 45 pounds per battery. Now, as it happens, Epoch batteries also make a 105 ampere hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which tips the scale at just 22 pounds. So as you can see, we have on paper at least the same capacity at half the weight. Now, if you're already impressed, wait till you hear the rest of the story. Now, one of the key issues with lead acid batteries is their maximum depth of discharge, which is around 50%. Now, what that means is you should not discharge your lead acid battery below 50% of its stated capacity. If you do so, you will cause damage to the battery. So, now, going back to my 105 ampere hour lead acid battery, in reality, it only gives me just over 50 ampere hours of available power. So now, if we assume that we can discharge our lithium battery all the way down to empty, we're now looking at the comparison of twice the power for half the weight. But can you discharge a lithium battery down to 0%? Now, there are mixed opinions out there. Some experts say no problem, particularly with the newer lithium iron phosphate batteries. Others are saying that you probably shouldn't take it much below 20% in order to prolong the lifetime of the battery. So even if we err on the side of caution, we're still looking at around about 60% more capacity at half the weight. And as you'll see in my later examples, this actually can be even better than that for lithium batteries. Another advantage for me of the lithium batteries is the built-in intelligence that they have. So a lithium battery has a built-in battery management system which knows the status of the battery. And in many cases, this can be communicated using either a bus connection or using Bluetooth. This allows you to see information about your battery, including its current state of charge, 
how much power it's currently delivering or how much power it's currently being charged with and various other parameters that show you the health of your battery. In comparison with my lead acid battery, it's very difficult to know exactly what its state of charge is. I can look at the current voltage level, but that really is only an approximation and I don't know what is currently going in or out of the battery, so I just have to guess. So maybe I can't actually extract the full 50% out of it, or maybe I even go too far and start damaging the battery inadvertently. This is the kind of uncertainty you have to deal with when working with a lead acid battery. Another advantage of lithium batteries over lead acid batteries is you can also charge them much faster. And this is true particularly when you get above around about 80% of battery capacity. You simply don't have to baby lithium batteries like you do with lead acid batteries. Now, of course, there are a couple of disadvantages of lithium batteries compared to lead acid batteries. The most obvious one, of course, being the price. So typically you'll pay at least twice the price for a lithium battery compared to the equivalent lead acid battery. But of course, your lithium battery will last significantly longer. So over time, this will definitely pay back. But the upfront cost is definitely significant. The other disadvantage of lithium is that it doesn't particularly like cold weather. So at sub-freezing temperatures, your battery management system will actually prevent your battery from charging or discharging. But many modern lithium batteries now also include a built-in heating system, which allows them to go to something like minus 20 Celsius. And for me, that's plenty cold enough. So we have covered the question, why lithium? The next question is why the Epoch lithium batteries? Because let's face it, there are a lot of choices out there when it comes to lithium batteries. Now for me, there were three key criteria in making the decision, the first of which being size. Now on a Winnebago Navion, the battery compartment is under the step as you enter the vehicle and it's pretty restricted in size. And one of my key goals was to get as much battery capacity as possible to fit inside this compartment. So this already restricted my options considerably. And the Epoch 300 amp hour battery was one of very few that would provide me that kind of capacity inside my battery compartment. The next consideration was having local presence and local support. Now, as I said, there are a lot of choices out there when it comes to lithium batteries. What I didn't want was to just order some generic product and have it drop shipped from another country and then be left to my own devices to figure it out. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not naive enough to think that the batteries are manufactured here in the USA. In fact, I'm pretty sure that most of the batteries that I looked at are manufactured in China, and they're probably very good products. For me, it was more about having the local support. So I wanted to have local expertise, local support, and local accountability if I ran into some issues. So this definitely restricted my choice considerably. And basically what it came down to is I was looking at four particular vendors. I was looking at Lithionics, Battleborn, Renergy, and Epoch batteries. Now, Lithionics make a 320 amp hour battery that will fit in my battery compartment. But when I inquired about the price and found out that it was around $5,000, that was to me a complete non-starter. At that price, I'd rather just go with reduced capacity. Next up is Battleborn, who have a really good support reputation, but they're a little bit pricey and the maximum I could fit inside my compartment was about 200 ampere hours. Thirdly, there was Renergy, which seems to be a very good company, has a pretty good reputation, and they also have a lot of expertise when it comes to solar power in addition to batteries. But again, the problem with Renergy was that I was pretty much limited to 200 ampere hours in my battery compartment. Now, in the case of Epoch, I was not really aware of Epoch until, up until a few months ago, but I noticed that they did have quite an established presence in marine batteries. 
They also have local presence in Atlanta, Georgia, and I actually already had the opportunity to test out their support capabilities. Shortly after installation, I came across what turned out to be a very minor issue, but I wanted to get some information from Epoch on this. I filled out the support page on their website, but I also felt I would give the 1-800 number a try to see how quickly they would respond. Now, I did not get a live person straight away. I left a message, but an engineer got back to me probably within about an hour and answered my question effectively. I also got a response to my online support request the next morning as well. So this definitely validated my decision to go with a vendor with local support capability. Now, what made the decision for the Epoch extremely easy was its price. Now, I already mentioned that the Lithionics battery at $5,000 was just out of the question. I also definitely would consider Renogy or Battleborn, but those options, even if they would have fit inside my battery compartment, would probably be at least $2,500 to $3,000 for 300 ampere hours. Now, coming to the Epoch battery, here we're dealing with a 300 ampere hour battery. It has a built-in self-heating functionality. It also has Bluetooth and an associated app that allows you to monitor the battery status. And it does all of this at a list price of $12.99 US dollars. Now, currently, it's even better because it's on sale for $10.99. Now, I've placed a link in the video description, and if you go to the website and you sign up for their newsletter, you can save an additional 10%. So that actually brings the price down to below $1,000 for this battery, which is just an incredible deal. All right, it is time to do some testing. Now, what we're going to do is a basic before and after test. The before test is, of course, going to be with the lead acid batteries, and we're gonna run a test to get an idea of where we're currently at with our overall battery capacity. And once we've done the upgrade from the lead acid battery to the new Epoch lithium battery, we're gonna repeat that test and basically compare the results. So let's do some testing. Now, with lithium batteries being pretty expensive, I didn't want to invest that kind of money without first seeing how far I could get on my current battery setup. So right now I have two lead acid batteries connected in parallel, giving me a total of 210 amp hours of power. But of course, being lead acid batteries, I can only get access to half of that amount so I have 105 amp hours of available power. Now, we did do a couple of camping trips where we were off grid, and we found that after about a day, we needed to replenish the batteries. Now, I didn't want to just rely on anecdotal information, so I purchased one of these guys, a Victron Smart Shunt, and I'll place a link to that in the video description, so I could get a better idea of how much the different lights, fans, and other devices were consuming, and I also set up a test to run a typical 24-hour cycle completely unhooked. I even covered up the solar panels on the roof to make sure we weren't getting any solar assistance, and then I wanted to see exactly how much power we would consume in a typical 24-hour cycle. We are actually just coming up on the 24 hours right now, so in a few minutes' time, we're going to see exactly what those results look like. Okay, we are now at 24 hours of our test. Uh, I've just powered pretty much everything off, and I'm looking at the Victron Smart Shunt app here. I'm recording this, and I'll put the same screen that I'm looking at up here so you can see exactly what I'm looking at. As you can see, we have consumed 78.7 .7 amp hours during that 24-hour cycle, and that's really pretty minimalist. So lights, some fans, things of that nature. The main thing being the fridge, um, which in this particular model is a 12 volt only fridge. When it's running, it consumes somewhere between 60 and 70 watts. Of course, it doesn't run non-stop. It runs about 
50% of the time during the day, probably a little bit less at night. And there's also a night mode, which puts it in a lower power configuration. So as you can see, 78.7, .7, so close to 80 ampere hours during a 24 hour cycle. Now, I don't know why it's telling me that I have 69% still state of charge because 210 amp hours minus 78 is around about 130 something amp hours, which is more like 62, 63% state of charge. And remember, once you get down to that 50% mark with lead acid batteries, that's basically when you need to recharge them. The other thing you'll notice that even though we are at a minimal draw right now of just four watts, um, it's showing a voltage of 12.11 volts, which is dangerously close to that 12 volt mark, which for a lead acid battery is a right around the 50% mark. So maybe my batteries aren't quite at their prime, which is another good reason to do an upgrade. Okay, so we are coming up on the 24 hour mark right now. We have once again consumed around about 80 ampere hours of energy. Now, this might seem like a bit of a pointless test given that we know already how much energy we're going to consume. We know the capacity of the battery, but this is one of those cases where I really just wanted to see this and confirm it for myself. So I am now looking at the Epoch battery app connected via Bluetooth to the battery itself. I'm gonna put this on screen here so you can see exactly the same thing I am seeing. And as you can see, we have a remaining 219.6 ampere hours out of available 300. So we are at 73% capacity. Now with a lithium battery, when it says 73%, you really get 73% remaining. Now, before you head to the comment section and start writing about discharging a lithium battery, no, it's not recommended necessarily to take it all the way down to 0%. Most manufacturers will recommend that you stay at least above 20%. But bottom line here, with my lead acid battery, after 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer, I was already in desperate need of recharging. Here I could go 48 hours, 72 hours, maybe even longer than 72 hours before I would reach the same situation. So clearly a major upgrade over and above my existing lead acid batteries. So there you have it. That concludes our review of the Epoch 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. As you can probably tell, I am pretty impressed. Now, earlier on, we discussed the Epoch 105 amp hour battery weighing in at just 22 pounds. Well, in this case, the 300 ampere hour batteries weighs in at just 56 pounds. So basically by Doing the upgrade from the lead acid batteries to the Epoch 300 ampere hour battery, I've reduced my weight by about 40%. And as you saw during our testing, I've increased our ability to dry camp from about 24 hours to at least three days before I have to be concerned about charging my battery. So I am really impressed that the guys at Epoch have managed to provide so much power in a battery that is so small, so light, and at this price point, this has to be one of the most compelling products on the market currently. Now, I do have a couple of gripes for the guys at Epoch. Now, the first one, it seems pretty trivial, but the battery did not come with any kind of terminal connectors. Now, it's not even about the price because I found some on Amazon and they were less than $10, but it was a complete surprise that the connectors were not included. And there was also no information about what kind of connectors were compatible. So I had to do some research for myself, order them online, and then wait another couple of days before I could do my installation. As I said, it's not that big a deal, and I was able to find them online, and I'll place a link to them in the video description as well for anybody who's looking at this particular battery. 
The other gripe I have is with the app. Now, don't get me wrong, the app is excellent and provides a lot of really good information. I also found that the Bluetooth range was very long in compared to some of the Bluetooth apps that I've seen. Now, the issues I had with the app are, first of all, when you open it up, it shows you every Bluetooth device that's in range. So it shows you your phone, your TV, your Bluetooth speakers, absolutely everything, regardless of whether or not it's compatible with the app. This seems like an easy fix. The other thing is that when using the app after closing it and reopening again, often it would not find the battery. So you have to close out the app completely, restart it, and then it would find it no problem at all. These are little things that I'm sure can be approved with future versions that would just make for a more perfect product. So in conclusion then, as I said, I am very impressed with the battery. I am very pleased with my purchase. I have placed links to all of the products featured during this video into the video description. Now again, if you're interested in the installation process, particularly if you are a Winnebago Navion or View owner, check out the channel for that video also. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button. And of course, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button so you can be informed when any new videos post. Thank you again for watching.